Welcome to Definitions and Theories of Globalization, and we'll start off with Roland Robertson, who was among the first to come up with the concept of globalization. So globalization basically means the shortening of distances, whether spatial or temporal, the breaking down of barriers, um, such as that, as we discuss in postmodernity. But this doesn't imply that all structures have been demolished. This just implies that uh, it's easier for us to transcend these borders. Two main factors behind this is having the internet and having technologies in communication, as well as technologies that enable travel in a short time. So Roland Robertson was a key figure in the formalization and specification of the concept of globalization. So if you recall uh, the classical theories and the contemporary theories that move on to a more individualistic perspective and also postmodernity threat to sociology, there is actually a continuation from that to theories of globalization. So it doesn't just jump out of nowhere. So we'll be seeing some names like Parsons, uh, Durkheim, Marx, and even Weber. So initially, Robertson sought to link the functionalist concept, recall structural functionalism, its concept of modernization, uh, if you recall Rostow, into an international context. So Robertson basically wanted to apply these, or this modernization theory, not into a singular nation state, but into an entire system of nation states. Originally, Robertson's argument was that such an international system existed in nascent form. So Robertson meant to have the ontology or to conceptualize the fact that if you recall um, modernization theory, and we'll also come to world systems theory later, and dependency theory, there is an interrelation between nation states that are at the core, uh, they are more economically powerful, and the other nations that rely on their relationships to these core nations. So this notion of system was inspired by Parsons' AGIL. So at first, Robertson focused on the nation-state society, as his basic unit of analysis in an international arena. That is to say, he looked at how all nation-states are part of the international system of states. If you recall um, the formation of the modern nation-state in the Westphalian system, post-1648. So that was basically the entire uh, playground for all the nation-states to interact in. But later on, Robertson developed an interest in religion and politics on a world scale because he was inspired by Weber's idealist conception of history. So now he took a more, he was moving away a bit from Parsons into taking a more interpretivist rather than functionalist um, ontology or epistemology. And um, he also looked at how this impacted upon materialist conditions. So it's like moving away from um, looking at materialist factors into idealist factors. So after that, Robertson rejected the idea that there was a completely formed international system. Because at first he was looking at nation states as though they were fixed in boundaries. But then later he realized that there are such things as culture and civilization that makes these barriers a little bit fuzzier and difficult to define. So therefore, Robertson shifted his unit of analysis a little where he started writing on globalization as a process in the mid-1980s, and now he was focusing on the globe and culture rather than on the nation-state. So he moved from looking at the nation-state as his basic unit of analysis into looking at the entire globe. And so thus he defined globalization as the compression of the world and the intensification of consciousness of the world as a whole. Both concrete global interdependence and consciousness of the global whole. In other words, the world becomes smaller and people have to become aware of this. So Robertson's conceptual framework was like this. Thus, he included the establishment of cultural, social, and phenomenological linkages between four elements. So there are four parts uh, which are interrelated in Robertson's entire conceptual model. Number one, the individual self, Number two, the national society. Number three, the international system of societies. And number four, humanity in general. Four levels of analysis. And this involves the relativization 
of individuals and national reference points to general and supranational ones. So we come to an interesting model here where the four parts just now, the individual self, the national society, the international system of societies, and humanity in general, are interlinked. So we shall label the individual self as one, the national society as two, the international system of societies as three, and humanity in general as four. All right, so one is a citizen of two, by comparison with developments in three, and as an instance of four. So the individual self is a citizen of the national society, by comparison with developments in the international system of societies, and as an instance of humanity in general. And number two, the national society stands in a problematic relationship to one, the individual self, and in terms of in terms of freedom and control, considers itself a member of three, the international system of societies, and must adhere to citizen rights based on four, which is humanity in general. Three, the international system of societies depends on the surrender of sovereignty by two, the national society. It sets standards for one, the individual self, and provides so-called reality checks for number four, humanity in general's aspirations. Meanwhile, humanity in general, number four, is defined in terms that are expressed in the citizenship provisions of number two, the national society, which are legitimized and enforced through number three, the international system of societies. So again, very much like Durkheim's organic solidarity, everyone's interrelated. So for Robertson, there is an increasing probability that individual phenomenologies will now be addressed to the entire world. So this is like addressing the zeitgeist or worldview um, and broadcasting it to the entire world. So these include mass media and consumption practices in which a globalization of tastes is readily apparent. For example, you may have things like Japanese anime and manga or even K-pop, which gets broadcast on a really wide level uh, from a particular nation state to individuals all across the world and it transcends boundaries. And then military or political issues have now been redefined as the world order, and economic issues have been defined in ways such as the international recession. Of course, like every other theorist, there are limitations to Robertson's arguments, and he is aware of that. And he claims that the entire process of globalization is neither good or bad in a value-oriented sense. Uh, it's just something that's happening, and neither is the world becoming more integrated or more harmonious, it's just becoming more unified and more systematic and more connected. He's not saying whether we should or shouldn't globalize. So in a way, Robertson is inspired by Giddens' structuration, and Robertson notes that the globalized world is different from the past, in that it is reflexive, like what Giddens said, and has moved from being in itself to for itself, like how Marx described class.